Oh, right there, green tree frog. That's a threatened species. Florida's been in such a drought lately, I haven't seen hardly any amphibians. Now we did finally get us a good rainfall and now all the amphibians seem to be coming out. First off, we found this green tree frog. Now this species is threatened by an invasive species of tree frog called the Cuban tree frog. The green tree frog is a nocturnal and arboreal species, which means it primarily comes out at nighttime and it seeks refuge in the trees. This thing's an excellent hunter. It sees well at night and it uh, is a very important species. He's a very agile climber. He has a sticky coat on him that's to help ward off predators. And he jumps. Clearly he wants to be gone, so let's let him be and move on to the next. With such a good rainfall, all the tadpoles seem to have started to developing into small amphibians. If you look closely, the ground almost seems like it's moving. There's thousands of these baby toads everywhere. Now this is a southern toad. Southern toads range in the southern United States, one of a few toad species here in America. The southern toad has glands on top of its head that secrete toxins. If eaten by a predator, those toxins will be enough to ward off or help remind it not to ever do that again. On the smaller toads, they don't have much of a chance, just the sheer numbers. But these larger toads, it's enough to let them survive an attack and continue to reproduce and live a happy life. All amphibians rely heavily on water for reproduction. But toads can tolerate a little bit of a drier climate than frogs and other amphibian species. Toads have a warty appearance. Those two big lumps on the back of his neck are the glands that secrete toxins. Let's let that guy go and look at this more rare species here. Now this is the slimy salamander. The slimy salamander lives in a low woodland, highly moist environment and usually finds its home under logs and debris piles. Amphibians are some of the most sensitive creatures in our ecosystem. If you stop seeing amphibians, there's a good sign there's something wrong with the ecosystem. Usually a lack of rain or some kind of toxin. Usually attributed to man, such as pollution. Now this amphibian was fortunate enough to survive an attack. As you can see, he's lost part of his tail. Now that's the nice thing about some amphibian species that have tails. They're able to lose them and still continue on to live and create a happy life for itself. Now let's let this guy free. Be sure to press that like button. Every like really does help. And subscribe and you'll be notified of future episodes. And go back and check out some of our previous episodes like the channel trailer. As soon as I reach that 1000 subscriber mark, I plan to do a special episode. Now this is the fourth most painful sting in the insect kingdom. I want to do the cow killer challenge. I will induce a sting from one of the most wicked insects and if not the most wicked insect in the southeastern United States, the cow killer. So comment, share, and like, and definitely subscribe, and that'll happen before you know it.